What's going on guys? In today's tutorial we are going to learn about saving some data to our application. So even if the user exits the application and then comes back, that, that information is going to be stored and it's going to be the same. So we're going to have a high score essentially and that's going to be consistent each time they use our application. It's not going to erase that data for us. So let's just jump into it. The, what we're going to do first is work with the ball script because again within our game over function we want to uh, save high score here because the game's obviously over and we want to do that before we load the new level otherwise it's going to cause us some problems because we're loading a new level then we're trying to save the high score it's just better to do it right before the load level alright so how we're going to do this is create an if statement because we want to check whatever the global high score is already and if our current score of this game is higher than that that uh, high score that we saved within the application then we're going to update the high score. So we're just going to check if current score, which we called score here, is greater than, and we're going to refer to something called the player's prefs. And basically, our application, you can think of it as a mansion. It has a bunch of different classes or different rooms within this mansion. And one of these rooms is called player prefs. Now you can open this door up, and you can store some data in there. You can store some boxes, you can store some strings or some integer values. And what we want to do is we want to get the box called brick breaker high score. And we want to open that value up and see what the integer value is is within that box. Um, so how we do that is we go to, refer to the players prefs class or room, however you want to think of it. Then we're going to say get int because again it's an integer value we're looking for and we're going to refer to the value name or whatever the name of that box is that we stored in that in that room and we can say brick uh, score something like that whatever you guys want to label this we're going to get that information and we're going to open up that box and see what the high score currently is now we haven't saved anything in that box we haven't even put that box in the players press room yet it's still going to try and retrieve that information for us and if if it can't find the specific box it's going to create one for us. And if that's the case, then we want to save uh, or we want to update this brick score box and put our new integer in there, which will be the current high score of this game. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, we're only going to go within this condition if we have the new high score at this game. And how we do this is we're just going to refer to the player's prefs again. And instead of saying get, we're going to say set int. And again, we're setting the integer value for the box that we set up, brick score and then we're giving it a value. This could be like one, two, whatever. Uh, since it's an integer, we have to give it an integer value. And again, since our score is an integer, that's what we're gonna save within this game over here. So we're gonna say game over, or I'm sorry, score. And that's how that works. So all we're doing is we're checking if the current score is greater than whatever the, you know, whatever is within our storage. And if it is, then we're gonna update our new storage box called brick score. We have everything set up. Now we're saving information to our application. So let's just justify this. Let's go again into our menu class. Let's open up our menu controller. Again, that invisible object within our room that we attach the script called menu. And we're going to open up that menu script and, and kind of update this. We're going to create a new function called awake. Now awake is kind of like start. It's only going to be called once. And once we awake this object, that we've attached the script to, we're going to call this awake method one time. And all we're going to do is change the text of our 3D text object that we set up here. So we first have to relate to that text object somehow. So we're going to create a new variable called bscore. And we're going to give this the type of text mesh. All right, so a 3D text object, game object, is of the type text mesh if we're just trying to change the text. So now within our awake method we can refer to our bscore.text and we can set this equal to again score colon space in quotation plus our player's pref room. We're going to go back to that room in our mansion here and we're going to say dot get int and refer to the integer or the the box again which we called brick score. So we open up the brick uh, score box and <laughs> we're golden. We're golden. We're returning that value. Some of you guys might be like, why did we just put this in the wake method or the start method instead of like the update method? 
Well, this is always going to be the same when we're on the menu screen. The score is never going to get changed. So we never really want to update stuff that we don't have to. So you want to do it within these one-time call things because, again, our game thread will call this update method over and over and over again. So anything that's kind of static, we want to do within like a wake method or a start method. So let's save this and run it and see if we actually get any information within our game. Um, oh, actually, before we do that, we want to go to our menu controller. And as you can see here, we're now looking for a text mesh uh, called bscore. So let's grab our bscore object, drag that guy over into our text mesh, and now we've made all the connections that we need to for our script to work. So let's run this, and already you can see I have a score of 60 because I already tested this out, but let's try and break that score um, by going to the Brick Breaker game. Oh no, that didn't break it, so it didn't change our score. But uh, let's see what my skills are like. So we got 40, 60, and there we go. So hopefully I can die now because our game is so challenging. And we have a new score of 100. Pretty awesome, right, guys? So again, player prefs is incredible. Simply incredible. You can store information in there. You can retrieve that information very easily. And also, uh, let's just go back to our ball script real quickly. Again, all we're storing here is an integer, but you can also store other things like the username, like with a string or something like that. Right here, we're just storing an integer value, but you can store a lot of different stuff within this player prefs room or class and access it very easily. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. hope you're catching on with uh, all the coding if you're new because we're going to be moving a little bit quicker here. But thanks again, guys, and I will see you later. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out.